Good morning, fine people of the vlog. Happy Vlogus to you. Yesterday we went to the beach and that was so relaxing and so needed. I wish we could have stayed even longer, but um, I'll take what I can get. It was actually just the most perfect day, just like the most beautiful day, 76 degrees, no wind, slight breeze, blue skies, no clouds, clear water. The water was a little cold going in, but then you get used to it and it was just magical, beautiful, I forgot my sunscreen at home, um, which was bad, but I did bring face sunscreen, which I tried to apply to my entire body, didn't work, really got sunburnt on my the back of my legs, but uh, at least this didn't get suffer. I, I guess it was so relaxing that I slept until 11 this morning, which is not, that was not part of the plan. I have many things to do today, um, but hey, I guess my body needed it. Mm, so here we are. We got a lot of kitties. We got a Tom Collins over here in this corner. We got a, a Joe and a Franklin in this corner. And uh, Cece is, oh, she's over here hiding. Okay, good. All cats are accounted for. Phew. What else do we need to do today? I think that's it. Those are all the items. That was a lot to do, right? We had to take a head count of kitties. I'm so like. I feel like my brain relaxed all the way into the ground. Like I don't, re I know I have to do things today and I don't remember exactly what, which is why I have a planner so that I can remember things. I write them down when I remember them and then I look at it when I forget what I was supposed to remember. And that's my system. I think mostly what I have to do today involves um, big mood and I have a therapy appointment later and and oh i have to clean like the house is pretty messy from the weekend and there's that guy who gotta exercise probably take a shower i took a body shower after the beach but i gotta wash my hair kittens and coffee stuff so they don't tell you stuff oh i gotta prep shit they don't tell you for this week <sighs> What should I talk about? What should we talk about? Well, I'm gonna finish my coffee. Hopefully my brain comes back to my head and um, I, will, I will catch up later. Somebody get me out the cell. I'm so trapped inside my cell. Wanna see me through my own light. Should look uglier than hell. Wish I touched upon my skin. I like the way It's 7 o'clock p.m. now. 1900 hours right franklin he's ready for dinner time um wow i just finished editing this vlog and it's going up now I'm super late everything's late i don't even know my brain has been like mush all day um i had my therapy session did some exercise blah 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 i have not ever smelled fresh air today mostly because it was almost 100 degrees all day long um so there's that i had big dreams of taking a shower repainting my nails um reading a book but those dreams have been dashed and i don't even know what's gonna happen now i could i guess still take a shower but i don't want to so there's that. I was gonna make dinner, but then I just postmated it instead. So, there's that too. There's some kitties. Uh, this guy peed in some fresh spots today on the couch, so that was really fun to clean up. Super fun vloggist, huh, Joe? Joe is just having a party. Yeah, that's where you pee. That's why his mouth is opening. That's where you peed and I cleaned it. I swear to God, if you pee at this cat, I don't even know what to do with him. He's so cute, right? So cute. But then, what a weirdo. He pees on things and then smells it like as if he didn't know he peed on things. Yeah, that's you, bro. That's you. When they make that face, Google says that they're trying to get more information from the smell. But like... How much information do you need that that was you that peed on that on that pillow? You jerk. Anyway, my brother's about to die, so I'll see you in a second. I finished my other poker book, The Course, 
yesterday at the beach, so I got this new one. I actually bought this for Steve. It was recommended in the comment section from one of you. Shout out. Uh, so I bought it for Steve, but he hasn't touched it yet, so I think I'm gonna start this book and just see where it takes me. I heard this was a good one for tournament play, which I'm not really well versed in. Doing that, making things happen. What a wild Tuesday. Woo! It's a party. Joe, you better not be again. Hello, update. I was feeling super tired earlier and I went upstairs and took a nap. It was a nighttime nap, so anything could have happened. I could have slept through the whole night, which I really thought I was gonna do because I woke up and thought that I had woken up in the middle of the night. But then I remembered I had only set, like laid down for a nap. So I went and checked the clock and it was only nine o'clock at night. So I got up, got some water, and then I started playing poker. <laughs> and I played for an hour and a half and I won 1300 bucks. So I bought in for 150 initially and then I lost an all-in pot at one point. It was kind of up and down and then lost an all-in point when I was down to like 60. And then re-bought in for another 200 and then just like started running super, super hot and um, won a bunch of all-in pots. Um, got a pretty decent sized bluff through. That was my only bluff of the night really. Like, I mean, I had a couple like semi bluffs on draws or mid pairs, but that was my only like real bluff. And then there was this massive all in pot where I had pocket kings. So my total buy-ins were 350 and then I walked with 1620 or 1618 and then I got a $100 bonus so that's 1718 minus the 350 math i don't know it's roughly 1300 dollars. anyway i tracked it in my bankroll tracker so it's looking pretty good for the month so far very excited about it i think this was my biggest winning session yet which is cool. I was gonna do some hand recaps, but I forgot to take screenshots. I was just so excited about how hot everything was running that I, I didn't take, I usually take screenshots of the hand history on the ones I really like, and I did not do that. Except for the one that I had Pocket Kings with. I did take, I did have, I do have the hand history for that. Hold on. Scared? Okay, scratch that. Actually, I just found out that the app that my friends and I play on actually records all of your hand history for every game that you've ever played in, which is awesome, not only for these recaps, but also so that I could study certain ways I played certain hands and see if there was a way that I would have done it differently or a way to improve upon gameplay, uh, depending on the situation so that next time I might play it differently. Very, very cool as a study tool. Um, but anyway, let's go over some of these hands. I won't go over every hand, obviously, but just some of the ones that led up to where we are now, which is the biggest winning session of my little three month poker career. Hello, slap it high. I know when you started Vlogus, you probably didn't expect this much poker content, but you should know by now that I go super hard on my hobbies. Whether that's candle making or bullet journaling or cats or plants, you're gonna see all of it. And right now, it's been poker, and if you ever watched me on JK Party, you probably know how much I love strategy games. I love deduction and logic games. I just, poker has all of it, so it's great. Anyway, okay, so these are some of the earlier hands where I don't think I would have played it differently. Like, I have an ace-jack suited. I raise from, this wasn't even the big blind. I just had to start with a, a big blind in, but I was from the cutoff and there's a, a jack immediately. The person next to me goes all in. I think I, I have top pair, top kicker. I'm obviously calling that. And then he lucks out with a flush on the river. So wouldn't have played that hand differently, to be honest. But yeah, we did lose a lot of our opening stack that way. And then in this hand, we have ace king offsuit. The guy to my left, what is he in the hijack bas basically? He raises and I call. I'm gonna do that. I win that hand. Okay, so we slowly start getting our stack back. And this is what I was saying that in the beginning it was kind of like up, down, up, down. And just to give you some background on this group of people, because some of you were asking in the comments, because when you're playing with friends, I know it's usually a lot more casual and you don't want to go too hard, but I met this group of people through playing poker. I was introduced to them through my realtor. And so a lot of them are real estate agents or real estate brokers or other businessmen and uh, they like to play poker, so we don't we don't hold back. Everybody has a good time and everything's really fun, but everyone plays pretty well. So I don't feel bad about any about 
beating anybody here. Um, also, fun fact, uh, my name is Trick Nix in this, which was my original YouTube channel name and has been my AIM screen name since I was 12 years old. I kept it as my screen name whenever I have to be anonymous on something because it's kind of like ambiguous. The people in here that haven't met me in real life all think I'm a dude and they all call me bro and they're like, nice hand man. So it'll be really fun when we eventually play another live house game and they see who I am in real life, um, that'll be fun. They bitch about their wives all the time, and I'm always like, yeah, wives suck. <laughs> it's really fun. Anyway, moving on. Okay, I think this is the one where we finally have an ace-jack suited, and we win the hand, but we don't have a lot in our stack. Obviously, I go all in on the preflop with 30, and this guy calls with a jack Knight offsuit. Jack on the board, we win the hand. He almost got a straight. Phew, thanks, Poker Gods. We got this one where we have queens, pocket queens from the hijack. This dude goes all in. Obviously, I have to call. Uh, that guy has been going all in all night, by the way, with like really dumb hands. <laughs> so it's a four way all in to the flop. He ends up winning with a flush with three, four suited. And then the button on my left uh, wins the side pot with a set of tens. My queens did not stand a chance. But again, knowing how some of these people bet, I probably would have done it the same way. And that's actually a point to how I play, I think the next hand coming up, is knowing how people bet. So early in the sessions, I like to see what people's mindsets are like. And this is why I play this hand this way. So, well, first of all, let me just pause and say, I usually would never play an ace X offsuit from under the gun and raise. However, there are only six people playing right now, and I'm fairly certain about how all of them bet at this point, except for the guy directly across from me, Thomas Crown over there. Um, I haven't seen him bet a lot. I think he just, at this point, had just joined the game. This is his second hand, so I kind of want to know his betting pattern more, and um, I'm not afraid of the other people with an ace nine offsuit. So our friend calls, the button calls, the big blind calls. But by the way, the big blind is my realtor. <laughs> uh, shout out to Raffle, what? So we go four ways to the flop, and wouldn't you know, good thing we didn't fold this hand because we got two aces on the flop giving us a set. If someone else has an ace with a higher kicker, we're screwed. However, nobody three bet the pre-flop, and I would think that if they had an ace with a higher kicker, they probably would have raised me on the pre-flop. So I'm not too concerned about that, but I check to see where people are at. I had also just read this chapter of my book, The Course, by Ed Miller, great book by the way, and he had recommended in some of the chapters checking the flop from early position, especially if you think you have the winning hand, and kind of just like not being scared of the turn or the river and just getting that hand to showdown, because when you check the action to your opponent, you're able to kind of recognize their betting tendencies, which is way more useful information on how to play all of your hands this session against that particular person than it would be to see bet the flop and then have them call and then you really don't know what they have. You're not getting a lot of information on their hand. So the big blind checks and I check and I want to see what this person does. They raise 32, which is a little over half of the pot. That's one of the options on this game, by the way, they give you the option of 33%, 66%, or full pot. So he bet 66% of the pot, which is saying he has something, or he wants to represent that he has something. Big blind folds, I call. There is a flush draw now with a with two spades on the board. I'm willing to just call all the way down to showdown, maybe re-raise on the river, but we'll see what happens. I check, he checks back, so not getting any more money in the pot there. The river comes in, it's a 10, improving our hand to a full house. We got aces full of 10s now. I'm kind of really hoping he has a 10. That being said, I can't risk him checking back again. So I do make a two thirds pot bet hoping that he will either call or re-raise me. And he does call and he does have a 10, which is awesome. In my mind, yes, we could have gotten thin value on the turn by making a small bet, but we also could have lost him from the pot. So I think by keeping him in the hand, we got to learn more information, um, especially since he checked back the turn, meaning he probably didn't think he had too strong a hand. Otherwise he would try to get more streets of value. So it gave me a lot more information to do that. I also like going all the way to showdown on several of these hands, even the ones where I lost the pot, previously with queens or with ace jack because people were able to see that when I do call something that I that I had something I didn't just 
bluff, right? So using this table image, I was able to get a really big bet through later on with the same opponent when he probably had the winning hand. But we'll get to that hand in a second. These were also some of my favorite hands. King, queen suited from the small blind. This guy goes all in. I call because this person has been going all in on sh when he's short stack. We have an open-ended backdoor straight draw on the flop as well as a backdoor flush draw and top pair with third kicker. I decide to go all in mostly to shove these other people off the pot. So it's just me and Kilo over here going head to head. Thomas folds, Martin stays in with some pocket eights. This guy, I'm telling you, Martin's, my, Martin's a wild one, okay? He's been going all in with like some wild stuff. Basically Kilo and I have the same hand except for mine suited. I end up winning with the flush and my friend Martin ended up getting a set, but too little too late. Sorry, Martin. That's getting you back for that four way all in earlier. Oh, this is the one where we get a bluff through. Oh my gosh, sorry, spoilers. So we're dealt nine ten suited from the button. That's a great hand to get on the button. I'm willing to raise or call pretty much anything. Thomas limps in. I raise three big blinds. The small blind folds. The big blind calls. Three ways to the flop. We have an open-ended straight draw here. We could either get an eight or a king and have the straight. I wait to see what everyone does. It goes check, check. So I raise 66% from the button. At this point, we have about a 32% chance of hitting the straight by the river. So yeah, this is a semi bluff, but it's also got pretty good odds. The big blind folds, the under the gun calls, the turn is a brick, he checks. I check. Heading to the river, there's another queen. Under the gun bet 66. At this point, I did consider folding because we got air, there's nothing. However, no one hit a flush here. No one hit a straight here. Maybe he has two pair and, or maybe he has a queen. He could have a queen giving him a set or he could have a queen jack giving him a full house. But if that were the case, I feel like he would have bet harder on the turn, which he didn't bet at all. He just checked and I was the opening better on the flop, which means I could be representing top pair right now, which turned into a set. He also saw how I played my set of aces on that last one where I checked the turn. So instead of folding, I decided to cash in on my table image here and I re-raise him to 198, which would put him all in. He actually sat in the tank for a little bit of time before eventually folding. The whole time I was like, please fold, please fold, please fold, please don't have a queen. And uh, he did. If he did have a queen, he was obviously scared about his kicker or scared about me having a full house with a queen jack. So yeah, that was our, a big, that was a big bluff that got through. And then, ooh, this was the monster hand we were dealt in position on the button, pocket kings, uh, this was the monster hand that threw us over the edge this session. Under the gun limps in, under the gun plus one folds, hijack raises to 20, cut off folds. I three bet to 60 because I want to build this pot, but I also want to isolate. And sometimes a lot of people, as you saw before, will end up calling big bets and we'll get a lot of people going to the flop, even with a big raise. And that's kind of what happens. The small blind calls, big blind folds, the under the gun calls for 60. He limps in and then calls for 60. And then the original open raiser, four bets to all in 78. It's only $18 more. Everybody calls. We go four ways to the flop. The flop comes two, five, king. The hijack is all in, but I would love to isolate him because at this point, the pot being $318, even if the other two fold, I'm, I'm down to take down the pot at 318. So when the small blind checks and the under the gun check, I bet 66% of the pot, which is $209. I have the nuts, but I'm not slow playing this time. This guy to my left, the small blind is new to the table. So he calls. Hey, fine by me, pal. I don't know what you have, but I'm pretty sure I, I have the winning hand right now. Our good friend under the gun folds. The turn is a jack. We're still ahead. He checks. I put him all in. He calls. He's got a pair of Eights. What's up with people calling with pocket eights? I guess everyone's hoping for a set, I guess. Okay, fine by me. We get to see that at this point, the hijacks cards are ace-king suited. A great hand to go all in with by any means. And I think with any other hand he would play against, he would have the winner here. However, that's it. We go to showdown and I win all of it. The side pot and the main pot taking it down, baby. That boosts our stack up to about 1300 and I start winding down the night. I did win a few other hands, like this one right here, one of my fave. I raise an ace five suited from under the gun. Under the gun plus one folds, hijack calls, cut off calls, button folds, small blind calls, big blind calls. 
Oh, I guess, and that guy was under the gun, but he just joined the table. So he had to act as a big blind, but he calls too. So then we end up going five ways to the flop. It's a very low board, but we have a gutter. It checks all the way around. We're hoping for a three. If we get a three, we have the nuts. And it's a three on the turn. Poker gods are in the house. I love when you have it, when you know you have it, and then people start betting into you. So Big Papa over here in the small blind, he goes all in again into my hand. There's nothing better. And then uh, the under the gun next to me calls the all in with 56. There's still two people left to act after me. I want them off of the pot, so I raise to 280, which would put both of them all in if they were to call. They don't, they fold. My under the gun pal here calls for 228. He goes all in. He's got a set of sevens, so I understand why he called. I'm not all the way sure why my friend in the small blind uh, went all in with a, with a pair of threes, but um, hey. I'm here for it. And it literally doesn't matter what the river card is because no one has the flush. I take it down with a straight and I basically call it a night at that point. I played a couple other hands, but I don't feel like they're worth showing because a lot of them didn't even go to showdown. And anyway, shout out to the five of you who are really into the poker content. For the rest of you, I try to keep these at the end of the vlog so that you can skip them if you want, but I'm really excited and happy. And this, this, was, uh, this was officially my biggest winning session. So yeah, there's that. Happy Vlogist, everyone. I'm actually gonna go paint my nails now, but you'll see that tomorrow on the next chapter of all my many hobbies. Bye. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a boy with some six pack abs and a sweet Cadillac who would take the time to call me.